So here we go. This is the big moment. Let's see if this is actually going to work or not. We'll give it a go. Let's see what happens. Hello and welcome to this Electrical Principles training video. In this video, we're going to continue considering the nature of motors. In a previous video, we looked at the basic principle of how a conductor behaves when it's carrying current inside a magnetic field. We saw that movement would be involved. What we're going to do in this video is explore how we can take that movement and turn it into a motor, into something that's actually practical and functional and we can use in our day-to-day -day life. Now, in order to do that, I'm going to use one of my very favorite building mediums, that of Lego, as you can see here. But of course, in order to do that, I need a couple of expert Lego people with me. And so I've drafted in a couple of master builders. Give us a wave, master builders. Hello. So together with my master builders, we're going to generate and build our Lego motor. And then we're going to discuss what the different parts of it are called and how we can identify them and how this system actually works. So, so we'll bring the video in and we'll have a little look at building our motor as a time lapse. So as you can see here, we have constructed our very basic Lego motor. This might require some modification uh, when we bring in the next stage of this, but you can see we've got something here that is going to spin. Now, the next thing we need to do is introduce electricity to this. So what we're going to do to achieve that is we're going to wrap a piece of copper wire around the rotating part of the motor. So what we're going to do is start it off at this end like this. And just make sure I leave enough of the wire sticking out at the left hand side here so that I can get that uh, terminated properly and access some of the copper wire. And then we're going to take it around one side of the motor, across the back, and up this side again like that. Now we could, if we wanted to, leave this as a single loop motor. So we've just got one loop wrapped all the way around there, goes around one side, around the other and back to the start again. However, if we were to do that, that would not make for a very effective motor. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this copper wire and we're going to wrap it around many times. Now, I can imagine that you're not going to want to watch that in normal speed. So let's cut to the hyperlapse. So now you can see I've completed winding the copper conductor around the outside of this spinning part in the middle here. And what I've done is I've just brought the ends of those uh, conductors to the end of this shaft. And I've just held them in place with a couple of cable ties and then stripped the end off these cables. So there's some exposed bare conductor there and there. So the idea is, is that this is going to be able to spin round and I'm gonna be able to just rest uh, my power supply against those two conductors that should make it spin and hopefully the momentum will carry it far enough that it will then make contact after it's spun through 180 degrees spin again and just keep on spinning that's the plan anyway so in order to get this to work now I need to add in something else so what I'm going to add into this now is my magnetic field. So on this piece of sort of Lego structure that I've built here, you can see I've got two magnets and these are called arc magnets. Now they're just called that because they form part of uh, an arc, essentially part of the outside of a circle. If we carried that on round, it would keep on going. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount that onto my Lego motor so that it is encompassing the rotating part on the inside. So you can see there, I've got the arc magnets on either side, and then I've got the rotating part in the middle. And what's happening here is that's setting up a magnetic field between 
these two magnets and these two magnets are polarized so the inside of one is a north pole and the inside face of the other is a south pole so now i've got lines of magnetic flux that are currently invisible but go from this magnet across to this magnet through the spinning part in the middle there so i'm just going to spin the whole thing round now and have it facing the other way and that's so that my big hands don't get in the way when i'm trying to connect up the power supply and get this running uh, and hopefully when we connect this up we should start to see some motion. So I'm going to connect up my power supply now and we'll see what happens. Okay, now it would be possible to do this using a battery, but uh, I don't have access to a battery. I've got access to a DC power supply, but the principle is exactly the same. So if I could have the two ends of my power supply, please, from my special helpers that I've got here. There you go. And what we're going to do is we're just going to connect up the ends of these onto our conductors down here. Now the problem that arises is that if I was to just clip these on here, if it does start rotating, then what's going to happen is that's just going to rip the connections off there and it's all going to get wrapped around. So the idea is I'm just going to hold these gently against the conductors, hopefully that will trigger the motion that we need and that will then start the Lego motor spinning and I can just keep the pressure on there. So here we go, this is the big moment, let's see if this is actually going to work or not, we'll give it a go. Let's see what happens. Okay, so we've got a little bit of motion. Let's see if we can get this to spin in. There it goes. So you can see there that we have created a working motor out of Lego, a bit of wire and a couple of magnets. It takes a surprising delicacy of touch in order to keep this rotating but you can see that it is spinning. Now what you might notice while this is going is that uh, it might look a little bit funny on the camera because the camera is taking so many shots per second and it may be that the motor is rotating uh, somewhere in line with that. So let's just see if we can get this going again. There it goes. And you can see there, we could actually put this to practical use now, we could do something with it. Obviously it's not very convenient having to hold these in place, so a, a real practical motor uh, would be able to hold these in place automatically and we'll talk a little bit about that in a later video. I think that is so cool. So when we think about what's going on here there is a current flowing through this coil of wire around here and that creates a magnetic field around the conductor. Now that magnetic field interacts with the magnetic field from the two magnets and that's what causes that turning motion. What we're gonna do in a future video is look into that in a little bit more depth so we understand fully the scientific principle behind why this rotation occurs, but it's enough to know that electricity is very, very exciting, and that's the basic principle of how we get a motor to operate. We inject electricity into a coil that rotates around inside a magnetic field. Clever stuff. So let's just discuss what some of these key parts of the motor are. So inside a DC motor, the part that spins around inside we would refer to as the armature. So that's the bit that does the rotating. Wrapped around that is the armature conductor or the armature winding. On the outside of here, we've got this whole kind of uh, frame around here is often referred to as the frame. Sometimes it might be referred to as the yoke, so you may come across that. You may also see this being referred to as perhaps the stator and the rotor, although purists would suggest that those terms are reserved for AC machines. So in this case, we're pretty much just looking at the frame or yoke around the outside, and then we've got the armature on the inside that does the spinning. And then of course we've also got this bit here and this bit where the electricity is transferred from a non-moving source onto a part that is rotating. This part is referred to as the commutator. In a more practical motor, we'd actually have probably a couple of windings offset from each other by 90 degrees, and perhaps even more than that actually offset by different angles. And you'd find that there were lots more conductors here that didn't touch each other, but were sort of offset from each other to create a more smoothly running motor. So that's the kind of thing that we would be looking at for that. We've also then got uh, this device here. Now again, in the real world, you would have what's called a carbon brush pressing against this that would be held in place by a tension spring. Uh, but in this case, I was just holding 
uh, these are with my fingers so these were kind of acting like the brushes inside a DC motor. So just one or two key terms there for us to bear in mind for our exams. We may be asked to identify the parts of a DC motor. So all that's left in this video now is to say thank Thanks you very, very much, much for watching! watching.